Many governments want to do right by their citizens. But they also want them to follow laws, rules, and regulations. Sometimes you have to think outside the box for this to happen. They hire genius creators and come up with some fantastic things to combat problems they've been having. From purposefully uncomfortable seats to blue and pink lighting, here are 15 ways governments control your behavior with genius designs. Number 15. Crosswalk Buttons What do you do when you come up to a crosswalk on a busy road? Well, you press the button, wait for the walk signal, and safely make your way across the street. In this day and age, the very thought of pushing a button that thousands of other people push is enough to make you recoil in horror. But as it turns out, in most places across New York and probably other parts of the United States, those buttons aren't even necessary. If I'm in a hurry and I hammer this button over and over again, is it gonna help me? Computer-controlled traffic signals dictate when you can and can't walk. As far back as 2004, the city actually deactivated most of its pedestrian buttons. The buttons were just left in place as mechanical placebos. There would also be a massive cost to disable the non-functioning buttons, to the tune of about $1 million. The buttons weren't doing anyone any harm, they just didn't do anything anymore. Did you know that? That's not to say that that's the case with all crosswalk poles. Some do affect the flow of traffic, but in major cities, you'll often find that's not the case. So you can go ahead and avoid pressing those filthy buttons now. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. Speeding is a big problem for many countries. You can put up speed signs and accident warnings, but will people listen? Not all of them. One country took matters into its own hands by installing some unique road stamps. They look like huge potholes, and given that you probably don't want to damage your car, you're not gonna go flying through them. This government definitely got creative with their speeding problem. If you saw this in front of you, would you slow down and be more mindful of your speed? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Slowing down traffic. The next time you hit a busy road, take note of the many things the government has put in place for the purpose of traffic calming. Have you ever noticed that you're always having to slow down, pay attention, speed up, slow down, and slow down some more? Fast. Well, that's because transportation engineers have come up with ways to alter your driving behavior, improve conditions for pedestrians and cyclists, and just generally keep everyone safer. They do this in many ways. Vertical deflections like speed tables, raised intersections, and speed bumps are some of the more popular options. However, they also narrow down roadways to make people slow down and install median barriers to reduce the amount of cut-through traffic. You'll find these things in quiet neighborhoods streets, busy city streets, at intersections, and just generally in places where traffic and pedestrians coexist. You'd probably be quite surprised at how many benefits these subtle traffic calming measures have. Decreased travel lanes mean there's more room for pedestrians to cross. Slower speed also means that if there are vehicle crashes, the severity of them may be decreased. The next time you see a speed bump, a skinny road that seems a bit silly, or a raised intersection, think about why those things are there. Number 13. Uncomfortable Subway Benches As much as governments want you to be comfortable in a public space, they just don't want you to get too comfortable. Have you ever noticed how when you're in a public space like a subway station, there's always something that makes you want to leave as quickly as possible? In many cases, this is known as defensive design. Small features in public spaces are designed to regulate public behavior. Essentially, the government wants you to keep on moving. One of the most obvious places you see this defensive design is in public seating in subways. They are uncomfortable, have weirdly positioned armrests, and provide very little opportunity for you to get comfortable and take a quick nap. That's because those who own those public spaces don't want you to get comfortable. My back is down here. 
you know? They want you to sit there while you wait for public transportation, but not use it as a rest stop. And what about sprinklers under building awnings? Well, same thing. Don't loiter outside public businesses or you'll get wet. Now that you know about the defensive design concept, you'll probably be more in tune with the little things as you visit public areas. You're welcome. Number 12. Street Lighting to Improve Public Safety let me ask you this, where do you feel safer walking at night? Somewhere with plenty of street lighting or somewhere without street lighting at all? It's a no-brainer, you'd feel safer walking somewhere that's well illuminated. The government thought as much, but they wanted to be sure, so the NYPD and New York City Housing Authority did a randomized trial by installing new light towers outside 40 public housing complexes. They wanted to see whether having better lighting reduced index crimes like robbery, felony assault, burglary, and even murder and manslaughter. After that trial, they believe that nighttime index crimes dropped by about 60%. Nobody got hurt. None of the residents got hurt. These findings make it pretty clear that lawbreakers don't want to break the law when everyone can see what they're doing. In saying that, there's a margin of error with spillover. This spillover is that people who are deterred from committing crimes in well-lit areas will just go somewhere else with low lighting to commit those same crimes. The government will never be able to fully eradicate crime, but imagine what they could achieve if every single street and every single property had improved lighting. Number 11. Innovative Wall Coatings have you ever been having a nice drink with friends at a local bar only to step outside and see people peeing up against walls? Not only is it disgusting to think you've got to walk through someone's urine on the footpath, but there's also the foul odor to go with it. And think of those poor walls that continuously have to put up with being peed on. Well, the walls are fighting back. In 2015, it was announced that many walls throughout San Francisco had been coated with a special water repellent paint. The next time someone pees against those walls, they're in for a shock. The urine won't just dribble down the wall, it will spray back all over the public urinator's legs and shoes. That would certainly be enough to stop them from doing it again anytime soon. So what's the trick? Well, there's no trick, just technology. The product is called Ultra Ever Dry Paint. It's a hydrophobic product with nanotechnology that makes the walls non-porous. The paint works by covering the surface it's sprayed on with air. Some voodoo magic happens and the wall gets off scot-free. It also has the added benefit of preventing ice, bacteria, and corrosion. It might also encourage more people to use public restrooms rather than their local city streets. Number 10. Hostile Architecture You've now heard of defensive design, but what about hostile architecture? The two do the same thing, but in a few different ways. Hostile architecture is small changes to public places to maintain order and hopefully impede crime. This is what I like to call hostile architecture. City workers took a look at common problems, then creative designers got together to solve them in innovative ways. Not everyone will agree with these design elements, but it's hard to deny just how clever they are. Slanted benches at bus stops are designed to be easy enough to sit on, but not comfortable to lie down on. This prevents them from becoming beds for homeless people at night. Then there are public benches with armrests in the center for the same reason, they can't become beds. You also may have noticed coarse rocks in the pavement outside businesses. These stop people from taking a quick nap on the streets. Spiked window sills and areas under awnings are both to stop burning birds hanging around and prevent people from loitering in those areas. Some businesses even put intentional gaps in their awnings, which means they aren't a form of shelter for people who want to sleep underneath them. Number 9. Blue and Pink Light Effect it's hard to believe that a different colored light bulb could have a massive effect on your behavior, but many people are finding that is exactly what happens. Blue light bulbs are being installed in restrooms, local businesses, and even outside people's homes, especially in areas with high levels of drug use. First of all, I would say anything that can be done 
to defer the use of drugs is a positive. The blue light makes it difficult for people to see their veins, which means they're less likely to use injection drugs in places with such lighting. The popularity of blue light bulbs grew in 2018, and they were being installed in convenience store chains and even popular Starbucks stores. While the light bulbs won't affect drug use overall, it will stop it from being a problem in certain places. Pink light bulbs are also being installed, but for a different reason. Some studies show that the lights create a calming effect while also showing up spots on the skin. In areas where teenagers like to hang out and commit crime, the installation of pink lights is having a surprising effect. Some people have noticed a decrease in antisocial behavior as a result. Number 8. Security Cameras Tell me this, would you be less or more likely to engage in antisocial behavior if a camera was watching you? I'd like to think you said less likely. After all, if you're being watched, you can be caught. And that's pretty much what authorities are finding. The use of cameras in Baltimore and Chicago has resulted in a crime reduction, even in areas where cameras aren't present. The mere belief that they are can be enough to deter would-be criminals. Even though the cameras would have cost a pretty penny, local authorities ended up saving money. For every dollar Chicago spent on new technology, they made four dollars, whereas Baltimore made a 50 cent return for every dollar they spent. As it turns out, changing your behavior in the presence of cameras has a name, audience effect. People who were being watched on camera or thought they were being watched were more likely to make pro-social choices. So if you feel unsafe in your neighborhood or you want people to think they're being watched at all times, just install security cameras. Would-be criminals may just become upstanding citizens. Number 7. Skate Stoppers Skateboarding is a fun pastime and form of transport for young and old. You can get in that much-needed exercise, get to your destination faster, and just have fun. The problem is, pedestrians and drivers don't really like them all that much. They can get in the way, cause accidents, and damage property. But some cities just don't give skateboarders a choice. As advocates for skateboarders say, if you don't provide a skate park, your city is the skate park. But instead of spending money on a skate park, some city officials are investing in skate stoppers. They look like metal brackets and are installed on anything that could prove useful for skating on, like ledges, curbs, and benches. If you try to skate on one, you can end up damaging your board and potentially even your body in the process. Many skateboarders see skate stoppers as a violation of their freedom. Others are so frustrated by skate stoppers that they purposely spend more time in areas with them to just use them as a challenging obstacle to overcome. Wouldn't it make more sense for city officials just to provide dedicated spaces for people to skate? Number 6. The Coughing Billboard Smoking is a huge problem around the world. While many people have successfully quit, especially with such a massive variety of smoking cessation tools available, it is still claiming far too many lives. Surprisingly, a simple billboard would be enough to make some people stamp out the habit for good. That sounds absurd, doesn't it? But this isn't just any billboard. A Swedish pharmacy chain in Stockholm called Apotek Chartat wanted to encourage people to quit their unhealthy habit by using quite a unique approach. They designed a billboard that would cough when a smoker walked past. The billboard has smoke detectors in it. As soon as someone walked past smoking a cigarette, a man in the billboard would start coughing. It would then display different products that could help people quit smoking. The response to the billboard was mostly positive, but it sure did give people a fright who were walking past it. There's probably no way to know whether it had any effect on the current smoking population, though. Suppose the coughing man wasn't enough to make you question your habit. In that case, the pictures of products after he had finished coughing may just pique your curiosity. Who knows, maybe one of those products is the very one to make you quit for good. Number 5. Classical Music on the Underground Many cities worldwide have problems with gangs and groups of people hanging out where they probably shouldn't be, especially around transport stations. They spend hours in these places, hanging out with their friends, getting up to mischief, and making commuters fearful as they go about their business. But surprisingly, just blasting some classical music seems to have done the trick. Vauxhall Station had a particularly bad problem with crime and antisocial behavior, so they took a leaf out of Montreal, Canada's book and started playing classical music music through the speakers. Okay. 
they were so impressed with how it reduced the problem that they rolled it out across over 40 other locations. Canada first tried it in the 1990s when they had crowds of people hanging out where they shouldn't be. It was then tried at a tube station in the UK in 2003, which had a huge gang problem. So much so that train drivers were even fearful of stopping there. After playing classical music for 18 months, robberies dropped by about a third, vandalism by 37%, and assaults on staff by 25%. Number 4. The Mosquito Many business owners often find themselves frustrated by young people loitering outside their shops. They have to put up with drug use, vandalism, drug distribution, and violence. That was until many of them invested in the mosquito alarm. This alarm emits a high-frequency sound that mostly only young people can hear. It's uncomfortable to hear, which means that any young person thinking of loitering outside a store with these alarms would think twice. You think it was a bit louder? You think it should be louder? Clearly, many businesses face the problem of loitering, given that over 3,000 of the devices were sold in the UK alone. Many of them were put in transport hubs and outside shops. They are also available in the USA, Australia, Canada, Germany, Italy, and Spain, just to name a few. Some people were pretty critical of the devices, saying they infringed on young people's human rights. Though, just as many people were in favor of them, especially when they knew unruly behavior outside of their businesses had the potential to drive away paying customers. But what about teenagers who were paying customers? Would they want to shop somewhere that had an alarm that produced an incredibly uncomfortable sound? Number 3. The Circular Bridge Traditionally, bridges are designed to allow vehicles to get from one side of a waterway to the other. They go straight across and are generally nothing too remarkable. But the circular bridge in Uruguay is probably unlike any bridge you have seen before. Its circular shape allows drivers to slow down, enjoy the view, and have a memorable experience as they cross the bridge. As vehicles make their way to the bridge's entrance, it splits into two lanes. You can slowly navigate your way around, taking in the sights of the lagoon, before reaching the other side. But it's not just drivers who can enjoy the bridge, so can pedestrians. There's a dedicated pedestrian walkway and four pedestrian crossings. These crossings provide access to the inner areas. You can sit, relax, and enjoy the view while cars drive safely around you. The bridge was expected to cater to up to 1,000 vehicles per day across the region. Surprisingly, as beautiful and functional as this bridge is, it was met with resistance. Local and environmental groups weren't overly impressed with it, but I guess you can't please everyone. Number 2. Pink Prison Cell Walls in the 1970s and 80s, research was published that showed by painting prison cells pink, prisoners were calmer. So many prison officials decided to paint their cells pink on the back of that research to see if it helped. The problem was that research wasn't exactly sound. It was full of flaws, such as monitoring prisoners in a pink cell over one year, then in a white cell over another year. There didn't seem to be a carefully controlled system in place. Ghent University psychologists were curious about whether these decades-old studies held any merit. They trained guards in a Switzerland prison to measure the aggressive behaviors of 59 male prisoners. Half of them were chosen randomly to go into pink cells, while the other half were put in white cells with gray flooring. Their aggression levels were measured on arrival and then after three days. Regarding their emotions and behavior, there wasn't any difference in aggression levels, regardless of the paint color. What's more, the university researchers even speculated whether the pink color could be counterproductive. They believe some inmates may feel the pink paint is an attack on their manhood or they're just to humiliate them. Number 1. Portland Lou. Public toilets are a necessity in any busy city, though not everyone is that keen to use them. Often, they are dirty, damaged, and just downright gross. But then, the Portland Loo became a thing, and people were soon changing their minds. The Portland Loo was a public toilet designed by Portland, Oregon. They are unlike most other public restrooms you'll find dotted around busy cities. 
They have blue lighting to make it difficult for people to use injection drugs, and they can also be solar powered. These 6 foot by 10.5 foot toilets are also large enough for people in wheelchairs or those with strollers, and many of them are also self-cleaning. Otherwise, there's a maintenance closet in the rear for regular maintenance. In some areas, the toilets are fitted with Sharps disposal holes, which provide a safe place for drug users to dispose of their used needles. These toilets feature throughout Portland and other cities, and many people have seen their value. Though not everyone is impressed. One police officer said they were a favorite nighttime destination for drug users and dealers. Others touted them as a magnet for crime and homelessness. Some of these things would definitely change my behavior in a public setting. You can tell someone not to do something, but enforcing it with a design is just genius. Have you come across any of these things before? Tell us about your experience. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!